Number 37. Beginning with the 23rd verse. It simply reads, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. The psalmist goes on to say, I've been young. But now I am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. The word of the Lord is blessed. For a few moments, on this morning, I want to speak to you from the subject, Great Expectations. Great Expectations. And the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And the Lord delights in his way. In this psalm, David lets us know that the Lord will never abandon his own. And because of that, my brothers and my sisters, we have the confidence in knowing that as God's people, he will never leave us nor forsake us. Our task as the people of God is simply to trust in the Lord. To do good, to befriend faithfulness, and do well. We are to delight ourselves in the Lord. And we know if we delight ourselves in the Lord, that He will give us the desires of our heart. And we are to commit our way to the Lord and trust in Him, and He will act. He will bring forth righteousness as light. In my house, there are a variety of appliances. All the appliances are vastly different. However, one thing that all the appliances have in common is that they all are connected some way to the same power source. When they are not plugged into the power source, they don't function. But when they are plugged in, they live up to the manufacturer's specifications. And I want you to understand on today that simply that we must be connected to the power source. Even though I'm different from you, and you're different from me, all of us have the same potential of living up to God's specifications. In the midst of our grief on today, we still must be willing vessels. We must be willing to stay connected to God. We must be willing to stay connected to His Word. We must be willing to be obedient to that Word. And we must be willing to be loving vessels. This simply lets us know, even in the midst of our grief, that we have been saved to be what God has called us to be. Because we are all connected to the same power source. This power is available for all who belong to Christ Jesus. God has designed us, but we must know who we are in Him. We understand in life, there are many hindrances. There are good times. There are troubling times. But through it all, we simply have to conduct ourselves 
decency, decency with decency and in order. So no matter how impossible it may seem, our steps should be ordered by the Lord. When things seem smooth or effortless, our steps still should be ordered by the Lord. In the midst of our grief and our frustration, our steps should be ordered by the Lord in the midst of difficulty. And no matter how complex or simple a situation may seem, our steps should be ordered by the Lord. When we look at the text, it is quite simple and quite straightforward. The steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord and he delights in their way. To understand the steps of a good man or woman are established by Jesus Christ. And since they are established by Jesus Christ, Christ makes their footsteps firm. They're planted evenly in Christ and planted safely in Christ. I want you to understand on today that Christ will never abandon his own. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And this outcome is totally orchestrated by the Lord of all. So we understand that God orchestrates the path. God orders the steps. And God orders the steps in such a way that they are made firm, planted evenly and safely. And one who is called out by God or established by God, their character is marked by humbleness, goodness, and righteousness. And God takes delight in the way we take. See, as we go through life, we must understand that God is in control. And he is in control of everything. This is why we trust in the Lord. Because he is Lord and sovereign over all. But not only must we trust in the Lord, we must strive to continue to walk in the ways of the Lord. We must be rooted in the faithfulness of God. And we must be excited because God has called us according to his purpose. We are to be connected and committed. The Bible simply says, I am the Bible. And you are the branches. And apart from me, you can do nothing. So we must make a conscious effort to stay connected and strive to be committed no matter what it looks like. And we understand that no matter what we go through, no matter what we endure, no matter what folks do to us or say about us, all things work together for our good. Because we love God and are called according to his purpose. So with all that understood, how do we have great expectations as a family in the midst of our grief? Number one, there must be an understanding of who God is. And when we understand who God is, we realize no matter what, God is present. He's ready to respond and he's ready to act. Number one, we must understand who God is. But not only must we understand who God is? We must have an obedient heart. Our hearts need to be prostrated in the correct direction. We must be willing to fall in line with God's character. And we must have a desire 
to be Christ-centered and Christ-focused. So number one, there must be an understanding of who God is. Number two, we must have an obedient heart. But last but not least, we must be connected and committed to the cause of Christ. This simply means for Christ I will live and for Christ I will die. When we are sold out for the Savior, we strive to live right, to love right, and to walk right. We are simply dedicated to the cause of Jesus Christ. When you're committed, you want to pray a little bit hard. When you are committed, you want to walk in integrity. When you are committed, your yes will be yes and your no will be no. When you are committed, you want to walk and be like Christ. When you are committed, you strive to love your brothers and your sisters. See, I want to let you know on today, you can be the best version of yourself that you can be. Simply understand that no matter what you're going through, no matter what it looks like, God's grace is sufficient. In your time of despair, God's grace is sufficient. In your time of loss, God's grace is sufficient. In times when you feel like you're all alone, God's grace is sufficient. When you're hurt, when you're broken, if you feel destitute, throw your hands up and give my praise because his grace is sufficient. Even when you're in the valley of the shadow of death, God's grace is sufficient. When your body is filled with pain, God's grace is sufficient. We've been made endure for a night, but we know that joy comes in the morning because God's grace is sufficient. The songwriter said, My faith looks up to thee. The land of Calvary, Savior divine. To the family, I came back here to let you know I'm praying for you. I'm in your corner. And no matter what you encounter, no matter what you deal with, stay connected, stay consistent. And if I can leave you with this thought, if you want to carry on Brother Derek's legacy If you want to save your Brother Derek had Stay connected Stay consistent When you encounter hard times Stay connected Stay consistent If your body begins to fail you Stay connected Stay consistent When you cannot See your way through Stay connected. Stay consistent. If you cannot find your way, stay connected. Stay consistent. If you get tired and you feel like you can't endure, stay connected. Stay consistent. If you get weary with doing well, stay connected. Stay consistent. If time is catching up with you, Stay connected. Stay consistent. The songwriter said, There is a name I love to hear. I love to see. It's worth it. It sounds like music in my ears. The sweetest name on earth in my times of struggle. Oh, how I love Jesus in my time of difficulty. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me, I will lift him up. Because he first loved me, I will spread the gospel message. Because he first loved me, I will love with the love of Christ. Because 
Be first. Love me. I'ma strive to do better. Because he first. Love me. I will sacrifice my time. Because he first. Love me. I'm gonna do what he called me to do. Because he first. Love me. Just know. Late in the midnight hour. A song way to say this. God can turn it around. Grief. God can turn it around. Suffering. God can turn it around. Despair. God can turn it around. Sadness. God can turn it around. Loneliness. God can turn it around. A broken heart. God can turn it around. Because he first loved me. So how do we have great expectations as a family in the time of grief? There must be an understanding of who God is. And we must understand no matter what we endure, God is ready to respond. And he's ready to act on our behalf. Number two, we must have an obedient heart that is willing to fall in line with the character of Christ. And last but not least, family, Simply stay connected, stay committed, and stay consistent to the cause of Christ. Can we give God some praise on today? Amen. And I say this as I get ready to call for the funeral director. When I was called to the hospital, I was called because Brother Derek wanted to be baptized. And I came in his room and he couldn't talk, but he could not. He could blink his eyes. And we split a little time together. But I asked him, do you want to make Jesus your choice? <laughs> and he said, yes. I want to make Jesus my choice. And because he made Jesus his choice, that wasn't the end. So we have to understand that it may be death on this side of the graveyard, but there's life on the other side. No more heartache. No more pain. No more frustration. See, over there every day is Sunday. And the Sabbath has no end. But see, he made Jesus his choice. And so what I'm doing on today, I'm going to offer to you, Jesus. Is there anybody that wants to make Jesus their choice on today? You don't have to join this church. We just want to make sure that you're right with God. Tomorrow just might be too late. But if you want life and you want to have it more abundantly, simply make it your choice. Is there one on today?
But if we got a saved church, let's give God some praise like we know he's God. Like we know he's God. Like we know he's worthy. Like we know he's good. Like we know he's a king of kings. Like we know he's a Lord of lords. Like we know he's a healer a deliverer, a burden bearer. God decided to make Jesus a tomb. Thank you.